So be honest with me here. How many of you guys have gotten so excited to do an acrylic pour? Grabbed your bottle of paint. Grabbed three random colors. Oh, those look good. Mixed up your paints. Did you took the time, did your pour, and fit came up to the finish and said, I hate this. This is so ugly. What happened? This guy has done it a lot. Um, I'm a computer programmer. Color theory has never been my thing. I can't even match my clothes. So I have to assume a lot of people have some similar problems. So I set out to learn a little bit more, hopefully to help myself not have so many horrible pores. Nobody wants this. It's just a muddy mess. Or this, where there's no contrast. It's just, it's not good. Or this, oh my gosh, this one's ugly. The colors looked nice initially, it just turned out disgusting. We want these. We want something that's beautiful. We want these. Happy accidents. So we're gonna look at a couple things that you can do, hopefully today, to make your next acrylic pour better. All right, like I mentioned before, we have all made horrible paintings. Let's talk about three things that we can do to make our paintings better. First one is use the right paints. And by that I mean use the right colors of paint so that you get less mud, so you get more of the colors you want, less of the colors you don't want. The second one is know the tinting strength of your paint. And the third one is similar to that understand the opacity and transparency of your paint and how it's going to affect your painting. First of all, if you don't have a color wheel, you need a color wheel. This was $5 at Michael's. You can print them online. I've done that too. This was a, a free one that I got from Diane Mice at In The Studio Art Instruction is her YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description below. You need a color wheel so you can understand one important thing. Anytime you mix colors that are across from each other or complementary on the color wheel, you are going to get mud. It's going to be gray, it's going to be brown, depending on how much you put together, it's going to be black. You're going to get mud. So, really quickly, everyone's probably seen this before, I'm just going to go over it really quickly. Blue, yellow, red are our primary colors. Then we have three secondary colors, which are the mixtures of each of these. Violet, which is blue and red. Orange, which is red and yellow. And green, which is yellow and blue. Then we have six tertiary colors, which are the in-between colors. Blue-green, yellow-green, yellow-orange, red-orange, red-violet, blue-violet. If we use colors that are complementary, we're going to get brown, we're going to get grays, because these neutralize each other. So for example, I have yellow here, I have my color wheel that says adding yellow is going to get this. Let me just... That is a great color for paintings, backgrounds, things like that. I would not want that as a primary color in one of my paintings unless I had a person that loved this color. So when we're choosing our colors, we want to make sure we're not layering our colors in a way that's going to create mud. And I want to do a quick demonstration. There are some much better channels on color theory. Go look at them. Um, Smart Art Materials. Olga Sobi has a nice video on it. Again, Diane Mize, M-I-Z-E in the Studio Art Instruction YouTube channel. I watched a lot of hers today. Video 254 about relative color, video 268 about color bias, and video 290 about tinting strength. All great videos for this. So I'm gonna do a, just a quick tutorial on, I bought the primary red, primary yellow, and primary blue from Liquitex, so I could show this. So I'm going to show I have a little bit of my yellow. I'm going to do equal parts yellow and blue here. Equal parts yellow and red here. So I have already made a fatal mistake. Can any of you guys 
point out the mistake that I have in the comments below before I finish this up. So we have our red. Have our blue. Have our yellow. Let's make sure we have all the blue off. Okay. So I have equal parts yellow and equal parts blue. Of primary blue, primary yellow, both of these are semi trans or all of these are semi transparent or semi opaque, I guess it is. So if I mix these together, I get my green, but that green is actually a really dark green, which we'll come back to in a second. And I mix my red and yellow, which is going to give me orange. And then I mix my red and blue, which should give me violet. So my violet looks like it turned out pretty well. Red and blue made the violet. My orange, however, looks more like red orange than orange. Why is that? It's because my red has a higher tinting strength than my yellow. So it takes more yellow in the mix to get an orange that I want. So really, this Equal parts yellow and red make red-orange. And if I want to make orange, I need way more yellow than red. Because red has a higher tinting strength, it changes the color quicker than the yellow does. Therefore, I need more yellow and less red to get an orange. Now, this is very important for paint pouring because our colors mix a lot. And if you get a color that has a high tinting strength and you do a dirty pour or a flip cup or something where the paint has a chance to mix a lot, you are going to get more of the heavy tinting strength color, like red, than you are of the less tinting straight color, like yellow. So the same thing actually happens with this blue. This blue actually has a higher tinting strength than yellow. So really, if I wanted, uh, the, the blue is not quite as bad as the red, because my green is pretty close, but this is a little bit darker green. It would be more like a, a green in this, er in this area, kind of blue, green, and green in between. So if I added a little bit more yellow to this, I could brighten up my green just slightly. And get more of the, the true, well, true green. There's not a lot of true colors. So tinting strength is very important when you're doing your acrylic pores. Now some uh, paint actually shows the tinting strength on the back of the paint bottle. Generally in the student acrylics they don't or the the cheaper acrylic paints which is mostly what I do in the, the Liquitex Basics, the Arteza, the Master's Touch, they don't show them so you kind of have to figure that out yourself. In this case I know that primary yellow has a much lower tinting strength than blue which has a slightly lower tinting strength than red because it took much more yellow to get my, my orange, a um, little bit less to get the green, but there was still more yellow than red on this side, or blue on this side. Tinting straight is very important. When you're paint pouring, that's gonna affect your pour. So the second thing that goes hand in hand with that is op opacity. If I have a paint that is opaque, for example, this uh, Thalo, Thalo Blue, is opaque, where this 
primary blue is semi-opaque. This color is going to overshadow semi-opaque or semi-transparent or transparent colors. So if I want, for example, if I use three colors and two of them are semi-transparent and one of them is opaque, this thalo blue, I probably want to use less thalo blue than the other two colors, maybe close to half, close to half, and an eighth or something of the thalo blue so that it doesn't overpower the other colors. You want to keep that in mind when you're doing your paint pour. All right, we're halfway through this video and I have a couple of things to ask. First of all, what was your aha moment? What did you, while watching, go, oh man, I'm totally doing that. That's totally my problem. Second of all, if this video is helping you, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. This channel is all about saving people money, saving people time, and creating beautiful art. And you can create beautiful art. The second thing you want to keep in mind is the colors on the opposite end of the color wheel neutralize each other. So in this case I have red and I have green. So if I added red to green, I'm just using my color wheel to add red to green, I would get this weird mauve kind of looking color. And the more I did, the more this would kind of this would kind of cancel each other out and move this color down the, the color wheel scale. So for example here, if I have my green here, this is my true green. The more red I add to this, the more it starts to look, get muddier and muddier and, and muddier. Or go to gray. So just to prove, if I have just a tiny bit of red and a little bit more green, See how that kind of goes to brown? That's what happens when colors neutralize each other. And then if I took my red and just did a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of green, it would dull that red out or neutralize that red and kind of bring it down. So that's how I'm darkening slightly and muddying slightly, making it not as bright, the red. So if I put red and green together and mix it, I'm going to get that muddy color. But wait a minute, red and green go great for Christmas because they're complementary. The red next to the green makes the green pop. And the green next to the red makes the red pop. So having the colors together is just fine. I just don't want them to mix. There's a couple of ways to do that. You can layer a different color in between. So maybe I have green and I layer in yellow in between and then do my red. So I, so I get a little bit of orange from these two and a little bit of uh, lighter green from these two, but these two never match, so I never get that brown. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is maybe have a little bit thicker paints. The more thick your paint is, the less you're, it's gonna mix, the less you're gonna get that ugly brown color or the darker muted colors. So the second thing I want to talk about here, just really quickly, is if I take two colors, if I have my, my wheel here, let's say I have red down here, if I take red orange and yellow orange and mix them together, let's just do that. Just don't want to, I mean, barely any red. So I take those two colors together, it makes a brighter version of those colors. See how more vibrant that makes it? So adding this red to green made that this kind of darker, duller color, but adding two colors that are similar to each other kind of brightens that color up. So on the color wheel, That's called split complementary. So I use this color 
and this color, which are close on the color wheel, and then I want them to complement with the blue. As long as I don't get these colors mixing, I don't get the brown, but then I still get that nice pop, and these two colors, if they mix, can still give me a pretty orange in between. And that's why a color wheel is nice, because you can just quickly see, okay, well if I choose those colors, how, how kind of do they work out? Triad colors, all mixed together, are going to go to that dull brown gray, because that's what happens when you do that. But if I can separate them with some other color to keep them from each other, then I can still get those colors. So, again, there's lots of great videos about color theory out there. Paint pouring, it, it affects us even more because our paint kind of mixes with itself. So we got to know what's going to happen when, that, when we're mixing paints. So we talked a little about um, the tinting strength. We talked about the color wheel. We talked about a little bit about the opacity. The other thing that I would have you do if you go to do a painting is check your colors first. Let's say I jump in and I grab my colors. And I'm like, oh man, I'm going I'm to try this. I'm going to try this. Maybe I'll try a little bit of pink. Yeah, those look good. Let's go do those. I do a quick pour. What's going to happen with these? This is types or colors that are on the red spectrum and a color that's on the green spectrum. Those are opposite from the color wheel. That's going to give me mud. How would I know that? I could just do a quick sample. I don't have to use very much paint at all to do this. Do a little bit of green there. So let's just really quickly look at what's going to happen. I have two colors that are kind of closer to the red on the scale, which we talked about that. It, I would expect this to make kind of a brighter color. That's not a bad color at all. I wouldn't mind that in my, my pour one bit. Okay. So now I have my green and I didn't notice what color and my rogue or rouge What happens when you add green and red together? They dull each other out. You get this ugly, I shouldn't say ugly, it has its purposes, but in a paint pour, I don't really want that color there. So that's not a good match. And then again, my pink and my pale green. These are close to opposite on the, so that color's not bad, but I'm not really into the pea green. If I get a painting that has those three colors in it, I wouldn't be very happy. If it had a little bit of this, sure. A little bit of this, sure. A lot of this, a lot of pink, maybe I would like that. So that tells me I want to use more of this, I want to use more of this, and a whole lot less of this, if I did want these colors. But now I know I have not wasted any paint. I did maybe 10 cents worth of paint here to figure out that, you know what, maybe that's not the best color for me. Absolutely do this. Put it on a piece of paper. Put a paper towel down, put a piece of paper down, and just do it right on top of a piece of paper. You will save yourself money, you'll save yourself time, and you will make way better acrylic pour paintings. So those are my quick tips for today. This is the stuff that I've learned, uh, I've been, been kind of working on with my paintings to make sure that I get more pretty paintings and less muddy paintings. What's your tip? What tip would you give people to help them create more beautiful acrylic pour paints? Let us know in the comments below. Again, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified if this is the type of video that you like, and keep painting.